In this question, we have a donkey that's harnessed to a sled with a particular mass, and the donkey must exert this force at this angle in order to get the sled moving. And in part A of the question, we have to calculate the normal force exerted on the sled when the magnitude of the applied force is 1,210 newtons. Now, to answer that question, you will want to first draw a free body diagram showing all of the forces that are acting on your object of interest. In this case, our object of interest is the sled, so we have shown the four forces acting on the sled. We'll go through them briefly. We have the force exerted by the donkey, which we have labeled F subscript D, at that particular angle and that particular value. We have the surface of the ground pushing up on the sled, that is the normal force. We have a static frictional force that is opposing the motion of the sled that points to the left. And then we have the downward acting gravitational force. Once you fill in your forces on your free body diagram, the next thing you want to do is organize those forces into a table. And that table will break each force into the X and the Y components. And recall that for the X component, what you'll be doing is multiplying the force times the cosine of an angle. And for the y component, you multiply the force by the sine of that same angle. Now, when it comes to these angles, what we want to make sure we do is that we measure them in reference to the positive x-axis. This is very important, and we'll see what we mean as we go through. For example, if we start with the force exerted by the donkey, we would take the 1,210 newtons and then multiply it by the cosine of the angle. Notice the angle in relation to the positive x-axis is simply that 38.3 degree angle. So you'll just put in 38.3 degrees for the angle. And then for the y component, you take the same force and you multiply it by the sine of the same angle. So it's going to be the 38.3 degrees. Now, for the normal force, we don't know that. We're actually looking for that in part A. But what we do know is the angle. Now, if you measure from the positive x-axis, you'll see that the angle would be 90 degrees. So when it comes time to filling in the normal force into the table, you'll take the normal force, and then for the x component, you'll multiply it by the cosine of 90. And then for the y component, you'll take the normal force and multiply it by the sine of 90. Now, we may all know that the cosine of 90 is 0. So you're actually multiplying the normal force by zero, which in effect is zero. So you may find it helpful to just make this zero right here. That should make sense, by the way, because if you look at the direction in which the normal force is acting, it's acting upward exclusively in the y direction. It's not at all acting either to the left or to the right. Therefore, its x component would indeed be zero. Moving on to the static frictional force. We've noted that the static frictional force is equivalent to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. So we'll use that expression for the static frictional force in the table. As far as the angle is concerned, we can see that measured from the positive x-axis, the angle is 180 degrees. So we'll take the frictional force mu s times the normal force and for the x component, we'll multiply it by the cosine of 180. For the y component, same thing, except we'll change the trig function to the sine of 180. Now, we may perhaps know that the sine of 180 degrees is 0. So, in fact, in the force table, we can take this y component and just make that 0. This, again, should make sense because if you look at the direction in which the static frictional force is acting, it's acting exclusively in the x direction. There is no y component. Finally, mg, the gravitational force, we were told that the mass of the sled was 246 kilograms. So for mg, we'll do 246 times g, which is 9.8. And then for the x component, we'll multiply by the cosine of the angle. Now, measure it again from the positive x-axis. You may wish to go the other direction this way. It's the shortest path to get to that gravitational force. But remember, when you go clockwise, your angle would be negative. So this is actually a negative 90 degree angle. So we'll do cosine of negative 90. And then the sine will be used for the y component. So 246 times 9.8 times, I'm going to run out of room here, times the sine of negative 90. Now, the cosine of negative 90 is 0. So we can actually take all that and just make it 
a big fat zero. And then we'll do 246 times 9.8 times the sine of negative 90, and we get negative 2411, roughly. So we'll change this accordingly to negative 2411 newtons. Notice it is negative in the y direction, and that makes sense because it's pointing downward. Now, once you've filled in the force table, the third thing you want to do is make a new row to show the net force. So we'll call this F net. And then what you do is you simply add all the X components together, and then you add all the Y components together. So you're going to get a net force in both the X and the Y directions. Now, for the X, we'll take the 1210 cosine of 38.3, which is about 949, and then add it to this expression right here. So you're going to have 949, it's actually closer, yeah, we'll say 949.6, plus mu s fn, and then the cosine of 180 is actually negative 1. So you're multiplying this by negative 1, and that's actually just going to change this term to a negative. So algebraically, we can actually change this to this quantity here. So that's your net force in the x direction. We're gonna do the same thing for the y direction. We're gonna add all the forces in the y direction. So we'll take 1210 sine of 38.3, which is about 749.9. We'll add it to Fn sine of 90. Sine of 90 is one. So you can actually just think of this as Fn times one, which is just Fn. So again, take this, add it to this, and add it to that. You'll end up with seven, well, let's see, you're gonna add this which was 749.9 to the negative 2411. So when you do that, you're gonna get about negative 1661. So negative 1661, and then that's gonna be plus Fn. And there's your Y component forces right there. The fourth thing you wanna do is take your net forces and set them equal to Ma. Let's start with the Y direction because it includes Fn, and that's what we're looking for. So we'll take negative 1661 plus the normal force is equal to Ma. Now, this block is not accelerating in the Y direction. It's neither being propelled upward nor propelled downward. So the acceleration is actually zero, which means we can rewrite this as negative 1661 plus Fn is equal to zero. Then just add the 1661 to both sides and you end up with the correct answer for the normal force. That's what they wanted in part A, so we've got that. In part B, find the coefficient of static friction. That's what we've been calling mu s. So for that, we can probably turn over to the x direction and take the net force, the 949.6 minus mu s fn, and set that equal to ma. Now, once again, the sled isn't accelerating in the x direction either. So the entire right-hand side of the equation will once again become zero. And now what we can do, conveniently, is take the 1661 and plug that in for the normal force. This will allow us to solve for mu s. Let's subtract the 949.6 to the other side. It'll be negative 949.6, and then divide both sides by negative 1661. And when you do this, you will get a value for the coefficient of static friction of about 0.57. So this would be the correct answer to part B of the question. Let's go now and take a look at part C of the question. Part C wants us to find the friction force F sub S when the donkey is it now exerting a 605 Newton force on the sled. So we can just go back to our table and the only thing we need to change is the force right here that the donkey was exerting on the sled. It used to be 1210 and we're gonna basically cut that in half to 605 Newtons. And we're gonna be recalculating the frictional force, or I should say calculating the frictional force. We haven't really calculated it yet. And we know the expression for the frictional force is this, but it's actually gonna be easier right now to just call this Fs. And then again, the angle of the static frictional force is 180. So you'd have cosine of 180. So we're just gonna look at the X direction now. We're going to sum all of those forces and we'll do 605 times the cosine of 38.3. 
So that's about 475. This one right here is 475. So we'll take 475 and then add that to Fs cosine of 180 and then set this equal to zero because the sled is still not accelerating in the x direction. The cosine of 180 is negative one. So actually Fs times negative one will make this a minus Fs. So then we can just add Fs to the other side and we can see that its value will be the 475 newtons. So this would be the correct answer to part C.